In this video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into the new update for Sales IQ that Zoho is calling the Nova Updates. A lot of this is gonna center around new AI tools and integrations, some of them being built out natively by Zoho using the Zia LLM and others requiring a chat GPT integration. So we're gonna go through each and every one of those major updates and I'll kind of share my thoughts and some of the ways that I'd imagine it might help you out. So with that, let's jump right on in. Here we are on the Sales IQ Nova release kind of homepage here. They've done a nice job. This is really detailed. It's going to show us basically each and everything that's going to be relevant. Really, a lot of these tools are around speeding things up, integrating AI tools, and giving you more tracking and metrics into what exactly is going on with your Sales IQ, specifically around the bots and processes around those. So first off, in terms of Zobot, kind of a few updates here. One, we're going to get some pre-built templates. I really like templates. Whenever I can start with a template and then make some adjustments, I find it really useful. Sometimes you'll look at a template and kind of see the way that they're using a certain action block or component, and then you can easily learn from that and kind of use it for your own purposes. You can also export and import these. So if you did have multiple brands or multiple instances of Sales IQ, you could kind of move your bot from one to another and not have to start all over. Next one, this is kind of the biggest update to Zobot for me is looking at the drop-offs, right? Kind of where are people landing in the bot? Are there areas where generally the chat is ending, right? So we can see here we had 216 go into this uh, block and then we had 107 and 102 exit that block, right? So we can do a quick bit of mental math here and go, okay, we're dropping off some people at that point. So you can make a choice about, do we want to streamline this? Do we want to simplify it? Or do we accept that little bit of drop off, right? This is a step that we need to have. And if five people out of 300 don't do it, that's okay. Next ones here are some of the Gen AI tools. I'll try to be really clear about which ones of these are native to Zia and which ones are going to require GPT. So the answer bot inside of Sales IQ is basically what was a natural language processing tool that would read the question, search your knowledge base, and then return answers from that knowledge base. What they've done here is they basically upgraded it. So rather than using a natural language processing tool, they're using a large language model instead, right? So they're going to be rolling out the Zia Gen AI for this, really. And I've played with these tools quite a bit. The search and summarization is going to get a whole lot better. I will tell you, a lot of the times people think they need a Zobot, right? You want to have some bot on your site to answer quick questions. Consider the answer bot right? It requires a lot less of this like defined flow building. It more just requires you to have a good knowledge base that it can pull from and reference as it's answering questions. Next up here, again, Gen AI being the Zia side of things, they now have a writing assistant. So if I want to write out a quick message and then tell Zia, hey, make this better, <laughs> right? Make this a little longer, make it a little shorter, rephrase it in a different tone. It can do that for you now, just saving that time and effort. And then also, if you are doing calls through Sales IQ, which you've been able to do via voice IP providers or in some internal Zoho products. Now it's actually going to give you a full summary of that call. We love these internally. We do this a lot with our client meetings, right? We've got a little AI tool in there. It's recording things and then it's giving a summary. Nice thing here is like if this was something you needed to follow up on, this summary could get handed off into something like a Zoho desk ticket and then that support agent would be able to see the context of what was discussed without having to listen to the whole call, right? You could imagine if you have a 10 minute phone call with somebody rather than a 10 minute time frame to listen to it, you might have a one minute time frame to read through a quick summary. Next one up here, we're getting into the chat GPT integrations here. So if you have the chat GPT integration turned on, what it will do is as you are chatting with a web visitor, so here in this example, Victor is like the visitor on our website, they put in a chat, ChatGPT is actually going to, again, check your knowledge base and give you some suggestions of how you might respond to this, right? So you could imagine you have a message come in, you choose the suggested response, you have GPT rewrite it a little bit, make it a bit prettier, and you can send it out with just a couple clicks rather than having to really type much out at all. Next one here too is they've added a chat GPT component into the Zobot interface. So if at a certain point in my Zobot, I want to take the information that I've gathered so far, ping it over to GPT, 
get a response and then send that to the customer through the chat. I can do that now using a pre-built action block. You could kind of do this before using Deluge code, but you would need to understand the OpenAI API as well as Deluge scripting itself. This will be a whole lot easier. I will say, and I always try to do this, put an asterisk on this just because while it is really cool, there is always that concern that a GPT might hallucinate or give information that's less than accurate. That is a lot less likely when we're talking about the answer bot because it's constrained to only pull from your knowledge base, right? But when you get into sending a block of text to GPT and saying write a response, that is unlikely to be constrained just to your knowledge base. So you really need to consider if it's a good idea and make sure that you test it a lot. Before we jump into the next items, I do wanna ask if you find the video useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with any questions or feedback and head on over to zonata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help you out setting up bots exactly like this. Next one up here, this is a long page, so buckle in. We've got workflow now. So essentially what this is, is the ability to do process automation at various touch points throughout the point of a conversation, right? So if you have a certain key event, right? So that could be like a certain word gets used, a chat gets missed. I can now trigger an activity, whether that might be an internal notification via click, maybe that's an email back to that chat recipient or, you know, the client themselves. You can do that all via workflows. We love workflows. These are basically just little if then statements that allow me to build and define a process that I can automate. Next one's here. We do have a whole bunch of messaging channels that are getting updates here. So if you do need to send out a message to a large number of people, right? So here we're basically saying like, hey, if somebody accesses the website and they're from the USA, go ahead and send them this message that says we've got this deal running for USA clients, right? So if you do have any promotions, discounts that you're running, they're basically calling these broadcasts. And I do recommend giving them a try. I think it's a great idea. You can also do a direct uh, scheduling of an appointment through your messaging channels. These, I believe, are all going to be running through like your WhatsApp, right? Things like that, where you have that back and forth messaging capability. Big one that I always like is profanity management. Your team shouldn't be getting cussed at by people. You know, that's not their job to like take any kind of abuse like that. So here you can go in and define a lot more granularly how you want to manage profanity inside of these messaging channels. You can also now do multiple business accounts from within one sales IQ brand. So if you do have like a couple DBAs, maybe you sell on a few different platforms and kind of brand differently there, you can tie in each and every one of those business accounts into sales IQ so that you can respond and receive those messages accordingly. We can also send out updates, notifications, and reminders using WhatsApp templates. So again, anytime we can template something and not have to come up with it from scratch each and every time, that's always a plus. I'm a big fan of templating whenever I can. And then lastly, if you are doing any chat messaging through Instagram, that can now deliver directly into that live chat interface where you would manage all of your WhatsApp or website chats. So one less place that you have to go to answer these. I do know like we have some clients right now that do a lot of their messaging through Sales IQ, but Instagram is this one little odd one that kind of sits over in Zoho Social, right? And that's not great, right? You always want to have everything all inside of one place. So you can now do that. Big update here. So you can now actually do direct voice calls through Sales IQ using the mobile app of Sales IQ. So you don't actually need any type of third party plugin or alternative tool. You can just use Sales IQ to do these phone calls. So again, if you think about how this all ties together. I do a phone call via chat. I get that phone call summarized, right, via my Gen AI. And then based on that, I have ChatGPT suggest me some follow-ups that I can send them. So you can really start to see these tools connect, right? And they all kind of daisy chain one after another to allow you to improve customer service or sales engagement without actually increasing the amount of work that it takes to do so. So again, whenever we can get more value for less work, we love that, right? Next up, they've made a bunch of updates to profile controls and security permissions. This has always actually been something that's been a bit lacking inside of Sales IQ. The way that it's always been done is actually a lot of stuff. You have to go into an individual user profile and change it there. So like, for example, being able to access live chat, that has always been like a user by user level permission. 
that's really annoying, right? If you have a large team of people that are working in sales IQ, what you really want to do is just say like, hey, I have a profile called chat operator. If I put someone in that profile, they get these set of permissions, right? I don't want to go to 20 different users and manually select all of those. So here, what I can do now is go in, create my profiles. We're going to cover everything from like live chat to chat, to if they can do a call, what type of feedback, what type of info they can see about leads, contacts, companies, etc. And I can just set that as a profile so that I don't have to do it one by one. Whisper chat, this is a big one. I see more people using this. What we're doing with whisper chat is basically saying, hey, if you have an agent who's inside of a chat right now and they're going back and forth with that client, You've always been able to kind of spectate, right? You can spectate or kind of ghost into their chat and see what's going on. Here, what you can also do is send a whisper, right? So if we look at this chat here, Patricia would be like the manager, Frigia would be the client, and Helena would be the sales agent. And Patricia can basically send a message in this chat that only goes to our employee that gives them some guidance or maybe like pre-approves a discount. Right. So like in this case, they took a look at the chat. They're like, hey, this seems like someone who'd be a good client. Let's give them a discount. Right. Client gets that discount, but they don't know that it came through this whisper channel. New integrations as well. So Sales IQ and Biggin now supported. That's really nice. Basically able to push things over as an account. I'd assume as a contact and deal as well. Create follow-up tasks if necessary. And then for those who are doing more of the support functionality through Sales IQ, you can also integrate it with Zoho Lens. Now, Zoho Lens is essentially a tool that allows a viewer to see from the camera on a mobile device. So let's say you need to like check out what's going wrong with some type of machine that's on site at a client's location. They might chat you through Sales IQ. You would drop them a link to Zoho Lens and then they could actually show you exactly what's going on without you having to go on site. So something like, hey, it's not plugged in, <laughs> right? Save yourself that trip to have to go there and find, no, the power button's just not been pressed. They've also done a whole bunch of updates here for the Agent Mobile app. Agent Mobile app is essentially a tool that is defined specifically for like the users, less for the admins. It's like a streamlined version of Sales IQ that allows you to just see like chats and, and really the workflow side without having to jump into the settings and reportings. So here again, we've got the WhatsApp visitors automatically integrating. You can manage all of your chats through this one application. The writing assistant that we talked about earlier, that's supported in the mobile app. So if you're on the go, want to send a quick message, you can do exactly that. Being able to edit, annotate, and apply markup to a particular piece of media. I really like this. I'm really prone to send people screenshots with red boxes, honestly, exactly like this. So being able to do that from the mobile device is great. Just kind of drag that box on there, highlight exactly what you need them to do. Same with videos. If I'm going to record a little video, I can actually trim it within the Sales IQ app before I send it out. Like we mentioned earlier, handling inbound and outbound phone calls all directly through the application. You got your conversation summaries that are going to flow in here too. Really useful if you need to pick up a chat that somebody else started, right? Do you want to go through and read the entire chat history or do you want to just read a quick summary, right? And basically get what's going on. And then lastly, of course, being able to manage all of your tags from the mobile device. So again, just making that parity, right? So if I'm a user, I want to be able to do all the same things on my phone that I can do on my desktop, right? And this agent app gets you basically all the way there. Next one, this is a minor one. I do think it's cool. One of the long forgotten features inside of Sales IQ is that it has this really cool little Apple TV app that you can put up on a TV that gives you a dashboard of like what's going on. A lot of times we'll see this if you have like an office space, you've got a big dashboard up there and we just want to manage the health of how we're managing all of our chats. That released years ago at this point. I mean, many years ago. They have now brought it over to Android TV as well. Looks like the exact same dashboard, but you'll just be able to put it on a non-Apple TV device. Again, I think for like the office environment where this is designed, I bet Android's more commonly used than Apple TV. So I think that'll make some people really happy. And then on top of that, they have actually expanded a lot of this. So what they've done is essentially used to just have this kind of primary page. Now they've broken it out into like a map, a set of reports, that same dashboard, and then some settings as well. So you can actually make some adjustments to what you're seeing on the page easily on those Apple TV and Android TV dashboards. So with that big updates here, I think for me, 
the main ones I'm really excited to see. As nerdy as it is, I do really like the interaction data on the Zobots. These have always been a bit of a black box before. And you could have a point in your process that like really isn't working for people and you just wouldn't have a lot of insight into that. So really excited to be able to track and view those. I love the answer bot. I think more people should use this and maybe less people should use Zobot. I think a lot of people default to Zobot when answer might get you exactly what you need. Switching that over to an LLM is a big improvement from natural language processing, right? Natural language processing, basically doing like a keyword search. LLM is like understanding the words and looking for articles that satisfy the question rather than just doing strict like word searching. Of course, really excited for these new AI improvements as well. Being able to do the rewrite and the call summaries is a huge time saver. Being able to get these pre-baked responses for things, pulling from the knowledge base is beautiful. And then having this integrated into Zobot is something that we've been asked for all the time. Again, put that asterisk on it. Be really careful with this. Make sure it's not giving out incorrect information. As long as you can train the bot to be accurate, really, really exciting to be able to tie that into a Zobot flow. With that, I think we've covered everything here from the Nova update for 2025. Really interested to see down in the comments below your thoughts on this. Are there any features here that you've been waiting for or that you're really excited to use? While you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel here if you're finding our videos useful. And if you are getting a little bit stuck with Zoho, head on over to Zanata.com, click on book a meeting as we'd always be happy to chat about how we can help with your Zoho implementation. With that, we'll wrap up for today. My name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time.